I want you to see one baptism video. You know we do these. I want you to see one from the past that really changed a lot of people's lives around here as they saw this, and it changed mine too. I just want to do a flashback in history. Harris, if you would play that for us. And uh, this is the baptism video from Amanda Lewis, and I want you guys to see this, and then I'll come back and I'll share the rest of the message. If we got that here, there we go. You know, and that's, uh, that's uh, just one picture of, you know, of how salvation and then being able to publicly declare what God has done for you and that platform that baptism gives you can not only change your life, but can change others. Now, let's go a little bit further. Y'all still with me? That's a good breakup right there. You get, you get to not hear my voice for a second. What does baptism mean? That's our next question. What does, it, what does it really mean? Well, the Greek word baptizo, y'all say that to me. Baptism. See, now you know a Greek word. So when you go eat lunch today and uh, you want some more water, just say baptizo me or whatever. Um, <laughs> listen, see, the, the word baptizo, it means immerse. It means submerge. Um, I mean, when you talk about John the Baptist, 
that word baptizo is actually the same name. I mean, he really could have been called John the Immerser or, God, or John the Submerger. I mean, really. Uh, baptiz, baptizo means to dip or to plunge. Um, when something is baptized, it's pushed under the water before it emerges again. Uh, it's submerged before it ever can emerge. Um, I tell Jackson, uh, my oldest son, quit baptizing your little brother in the swimming pool. Um, he's only four, and he's not a great swimmer yet. Quit immersing him. Quit baptizing him. He's not a submarine. He's your brother, and he's four. You know? And uh, baptism, if you really study it, baptism was a uh, Jewish ritual washing. In the New Testament, it became a symbol of the cleansing from sin and the sign of someone who had experienced salvation. Uh, in Acts twenty two sixteen, it says, And now why do you wait? Rise and be baptized. Wash away your sins, calling on his name. In, in the New Testament, this action also was seen as a symbol for our dying with Christ and being raised again to new life. In other words, as Christians, um, think about it like this. If you're a Christian this morning... You may not, you have not known physical death yet, but you have known a spiritual death and a rebirth of yourself in Jesus Christ. When we became Christians, we died to our old self and we were born again spiritually to Christ. Aren't you glad, church? If you're a Christian, just to say it like we say it in Alabama, you ain't who you used to be anymore. You're just not. If you truly are a Christian, your old life has died and been buried, and there's new life now. Uh, Paul teaches that, that our dying, our burial, and our new life all take place in union with Jesus Christ's death, burial, and rising again. And, and this is symbolized by baptism. It portrays that what has taken place in, in our experience really has happened. It shows that we, are re, that we are united with Jesus and we have left our old life behind. And that's, that's what baptism really means. And my aim here is really to help us see the reality that baptism uh, points to, mainly the reality of it, that, that it will grip us. And that, that secondarily, that the beauty and the significance of the act of baptism will rise up in our minds and our hearts and we'll understand it for what it is. Uh, Romans 5, verse 20 through, through chapter 6, verse 4 talked a lot about it. It says, Now the law came in to increase the trespass, but where sin increased, grace abounded all the more, so that as sin reigned in death, grace might also reign through righteousness, leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. What shall we say then, is what Paul said. Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. In other words, he's saying you, you don't take advantage of God's grace. If you're saved, don't take advantage of that. How can we who died to sin still live in it, is what he said. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. See, God makes old things new. God makes us into new creations. And one of the greatest things about this text is that it shows us that if you understand what baptism portrays, then you understand what really happened to you when you became a Christian. And that's one of my biggest concerns as a pastor, is that there are many people sitting in many churches, even this morning, who do not really understand what salvation is. They don't understand that it is an abiding relationship with Jesus Christ and that it means to know Him and to walk with Him and to live for Him and that it's a relationship that is given to them by God's grace through their faith. Now, a few other things. Uh, two important things that baptism portrays according to these verses. Number one, baptism portrays our death in the death of Christ. Um, and, and we see that throughout the Scripture. 1 Corinthians 15.55 shows us that, that because, we, because Jesus Christ died that death for us, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, that we can say what 1 Corinthians 15.55 is, and this is where the church can amen, that we can honestly say, O death, where is your sting? We can say, O death, o death where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? 
that we don't have to worry about the physical death anymore if we truly are believers because the physical death means that we're going to leave this earth and we're going to go to be with Christ. Amen, church, as a believer. Now, baptism also portrays what happened to us when we became Christians. We were united with Christ. My life in Him is, is a life that, that I know is there, and I can trust that Jesus Christ will never leave me and never forsake me. Because of Him, I trust that He is working in me. And you can do that as a, believe, as a believer. The same power and glory that, that was used to raise Him from the dead also helps me. Now, that's what baptism means. Let's go into a couple other things. How should we be baptized? That's always an interesting question, and it's one of debate. Church, Christian churches disagree about this at times. Some say that merely pouring water or touching the forehead with a small drop of water is sufficient. Some, some churches sprinkle babies. Some sprinkle you after you've gone through a confirmation class and they deem that you're ready to be a Christian. Some sprinkle you when you want to be sprinkled. Um, but biblical examples show us that baptism in the Bible was by immersion for people, young or old or in between, that have trusted in Christ Jesus as their Savior. Immersion is the biblical example. And that doesn't mean that if you were sprinkled that I'm standing up here saying that that's bad. That's not what I'm saying. I was sprinkled. Uh, I grew up in a Methodist church, but later in my life I realized and understood the importance of baptism by immersion when I understood that I had been saved by Jesus Christ and what baptism by immersion meant. So, and there's all kind of biblical examples for that. Uh, remember John the Baptist took Jesus down into the river, and then Jesus emerged out of the river. It says, and when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. Um, John chose to baptize at Anan because there was plenty of water there, is what the Bible says. Acts chapter 8, 36 and 39, it, it, it indicates full immersion. If you read about Paul and what he said in Romans chapter 6, full immersion. So, um, you know, I think that we got to take the biblical example on that. 